Yo, yo, people, well go and welcome back to Ron's Tech Hub. So if, like me, you are a person who likes to try different operating systems, then Ventoy, this new software I'm going to show you guys today, is going to be the software you want to have at all times. Let's jump into this one. Okay, so Ventoy, what is Ventoy? I'm on the website here, and all you have to do is Google the word V-E-N-T-O-Y, Ventoy. It takes you to the website and Ventoy is an open source tool to create bootable USB drive for ISO, WIM, IMG, VHD, EFI files, right? So it creates bootable disks. Now, one of the amazing things about Ventoy, you can copy many files at a time and Ventoy will give you a boot menu to select them. And they have a screenshot here. And with the screenshot, as you can see, they have Windows 10 Enterprise. Windows 8.1 Enterprise, Windows Server 2012, Windows Server 2019, and Windows 7 Pro X64. Um, the great thing about Ventoy um, is that you can actually put as many different operating systems on here as you want. It doesn't only work with Windows. Um, I've done some reading on here and it should work with Linux as well. So what I've gone ahead and done, I've downloaded quite a few distros, the ones that I would actually want to test so, for example, when they come out with a new version of Mint, I do test it. The new version of Zorin OS was released recently, and I think it looks really good. Elementary OS as well. So, let me go ahead and show you what's in my download folder quickly. So, in my downloads folder from here down to here, I've got Zorin OS, Mint, Elementary OS, Ubuntu 20 long-term support. Um, I've got Raspbian OS for um, for x64, sorry for yeah for x86 processors, Windows 10, and Manjaro GNOME. So these are the operating systems I jump around a bit just because I like how they look. I think they're quite cool. I actually don't need them, but it's nice to play around with new operating systems once in a while and move away from Windows. All right, so how do we get Ventoy? Well, first things first, you go to the main website. You're gonna go to the download section. Click on downloads and it should take you to where, okay, you need to be. Uh, there's a zip file here. That's the one I'm going to get. There is um, a tar gz file here. This is for Linux and there's a live cd.iso. So I am on Windows, so I'm going to go for the zip folder. I'm going to click on that and let's see what happens. Okay, where's the download button? Okay, down here. Again, I'm going to go for the Windows version so windows.zip ventoy 1.0.51 windows zip it's 12.9 megabytes gonna click on that and it should start downloading only took four seconds i'm gonna go back to my downloads folder and i'm gonna i'm gonna actually delete this one because i had it downloaded before i'm gonna delete belena etcher as well i don't need that anymore so here's ventoy i'm gonna click on it i'm gonna right click I'm going to go to extract all. Now, this is the built-in Windows um, zip manager, I guess. I do have 7-zip as well, but most people won't have that. So I'm going to show you with um, just the built-in one. Right click, go to extract all here. Click on that. It's going to ask if you want to extract it. Choose your destination. I don't normally have this box ticked because I don't always need to go into the folder. So I'm going to click extract here. Shouldn't take long, maybe a couple seconds. There we go. That's finished. And from here, I actually need to go into this, go to Ventoy, and I don't have to install anything. So this is a portable. I can simply right click on this and run it. Okay, so as I said before, to run it, I click on it once or just right click on it and choose run as administrator. Now I wanna do this because I do find sometimes that when I don't run programs like this as admin in Windows, it doesn't work properly. You can go to open and it should work, so actually, let me just go to open. Let's leave it as, as it is. Let's leave everything the way it is. Okay, so here we have options and language. Let's see what's in options. Secure boot support, uh, partition style, partition configuration. Let's see. Preserve some space at the end of the disk. Okay, we don't need to change anything there as far as I'm aware. I'm going to go ahead and actually plug in the USB stick I want to use. So bear with me. Okay, that's now been plugged in. I should be able to choose it from the list here, but because it's not been refreshed, I have to click on, I'm guessing, this uh, refresh button here. Let's see if that works, yep. So this is a 32 Kingston Data Traveler 3, USB 3.0. 
and I need to install Ventoy on this drive. That's the first thing I have to do, install Ventoy on the drive, okay? So let's go ahead and install and see what happens. When you click install, it says uh, the disk will be formatted and all the data will be lost. Continue. You have to choose yes. You won't be able to go any further unless you do that. Choose yes again. And let's see what happens. Okay, congratulations. Ventoy has successfully been installed. Select OK. What I've actually gone back and done is I've gone to options and I've selected where it says secure boot support. So I'm making the assumption here that if secure boot support is not ticked, if you have a machine like mine where Windows is the default operating system, you probably have secure boot turned on and it might not work with that on. So I'm going to choose secure boot support and I'm actually going to click update. So this should update whatever changes have been made via the software. So let's see what happens there. Okay, so I've had an error now. Error occurred during the update. You can unplug, you can replug the USB and try again. Check log.txt for detail. Okay, so I'm actually gonna remove this drive. Let's see if I can do that. Let's remove, oh, oh. let's remove it first. And I'm showing everything just because someone else might have the same issue and it's good to just see the instructions, right? Drive plug back in. Okay, I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna refresh this. Let's see that option is still ticked, it's not. So I'm gonna click on that option again, secure boot support. I'm gonna go back to update. And then I'm going to click continue. Let us see if anything has changed. Okay, that's been successful this time. All right, perfect. All right, so I've done all the changes I think I need to make here. I'm going to go to this PC to see what shows up. And in here, I have a folder or a drive, sorry, called Ventoy. Now, I think all I have to do is copy the stuff over to the drive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'm going to open this one. And I'm going to open my downloads folder as well. I'm going to snap downloads to the left and snap Ventoy to the right. And I'm going to go ahead and copy over all the ISO files. Shouldn't be more than 32 gigs to be honest. Let's see. Ooh, seven items selected, 23 gigabytes essentially. All right, that should be fine. Let's copy those over. All right, so that's finally finished. That took over half an hour. So I don't actually think this USB is a USB 3. But anyways, beyond that, so everything seems to be copied over fine. I'm now going to try use this device to boot on another laptop and see how well it works. So I'll be right back. All right, so here we are. I am trying to boot. Let's see if this actually works. Oh, there we go. Perfect. So I've booted into Ventoy. And as you guys can see, I've got elementary OS 6, Linux Mint 20. Um... Manjaro GNOME, Raspbian OS, Ubuntu 20 LTS, Windows 10, and Zorin, o Zorin OS 16. Now, of, of all of these, my favorites are probably Zorin first, Linux Mint and Elementary probably tied in second. Uh, Raspbian OS is very, very lightweight. So if anyone wants to have a really lightweight system that's usable, Raspbian OS is quite good. Ubuntu is the big boy on the block, so I don't think I need to introduce that one. It does require more system resources than most of the others on, on this list, except for Windows 10. Windows 10 is probably my least favorite. However, because of work, I have to like to use it. So, well, not like to use it, but I have to use it. Um, it's not the best operating system in the world, but it is really good for backward compatible apps that are used in the workplace, in schools, just by people in general, right? So from here, I'm actually going to go ahead and install one of the operating systems. Um, this laptop you're seeing is, is currently running Zorin OS 15 and I need to update to 16. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. But as you can see down here in these lower sections, um, you can go ahead and do a mem test as well. There's some tools and um, extra menu stuff. I'm not going to go into any of that right now because I don't think I need to. Right. But again, make sure you have secure boot checked on, on the actual software Ventoy or else I don't think it will boot if you 
have a Windows laptop as well. Now there are some extra steps you might need to take to make sure that this is picked up, but I won't go into this now. Simply research your motherboard or your, or your PC manufacturer and it will tell you how to get to boot menu. This is a Samsung laptop and to do it I press F8. On other laptops is F10, on others is uh, F12 and on some others is actually delete. Um, okay, so I'm going to go into my Zorin OS 16 now. I'm going to go ahead and press enter to install it. So let's see. Okay, automatic. I need to just try or install. Okay, go ahead. Oh, he's booting, I think. Yeah, there we go. So again, this is a very old Samsung laptop. I think this is running a Core i3 second gen. It has four gigabytes of RAM or six gigabytes of RAM. I don't remember quite well. Okay, so here we are um, currently in Zorin OS. I know what this is like. This is not a Zorin OS video. I'm actually working on one to actually give people an insight as to what is Linux, how do you generally use it and why it could be a replacement for Windows. So I'm going to go ahead and install this straight away. But from here, you can actually go ahead and play around with the operating system. Um, if you click on try Zorin OS, but I'm going to go straight ahead and go to install. Not the fastest laptop in the world, so it might take a while. Um, in the UK, so I'm going to choose English UK and just leave it as the standard English keyboard there, I believe. You can also go detect keyboard layout and it will ask you to press certain keys on the keyboard. I don't need to do that. I'm going to go continue. My Wi-Fi. I am going to skip this section for now because I don't know my password. Okay, so I'm just going to go continue for now. And at the end of this, I'll go ahead and install my updates. But you guys don't really need to see this. This was just to show you guys what Ventoy is, um, how it works, and that it actually does work. So now I've got, I think it was six or seven operating systems on this one 32 gigabyte memory stick. So before, I used to have, I don't know, four or five memory sticks with um, an operating system each. So Windows 10 would have to be on something. And with the new Windows 11 coming out, I would probably get one for Windows 11 as well. Plus, I would have three or four distros here and there. And because I don't like to wait to download and then to write them, I normally had those memory cards, um, memory sticks laying around. Um, so I'm going to install Zorin. No, I'm going to wipe everything because Zorin OS 15 is on there, but there's absolutely nothing on this drive. I'm going to go to continue. And this is a 240 gigabyte SSD, Kingston SSD, A400. I'm going to go install now. And that's it. So I'm going to let that run. So I do want to say Ventoy is an amazing piece of software. To be honest, I've never checked for anything else. What happened is recently I wanted to get myself four memory sticks and I then said to myself, I wonder if there's a way to have multiple ISOs on the same drive because it just seems like a thing that should be able to be done, right? I saw some stuff on some websites, but then Ventoy, I kept, re I, I, I kept reading and Ventoy was the one that kept popping up. Then I just looked at what it was like and I was like, actually, this looks quite cool. So even if even when Windows 11 comes out, I don't need to rewrite the whole USB drive. I simply copy the Windows 11 ISO onto the drive and that's it done and dusted. So it was really simple, really easy, really straightforward. So this was another software highlights from the King Boss. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, share and more videos incoming.